Hello folks and welcome to another video by Cloudversity. Today's topic is how to containerize your React application. And we have a small agenda to work with. And the first step, obviously, is to create a React application because we need something we can put into a Docker image and we can containerize. The second step is then to write a Docker file. It's just a few lines of code and uh, we can create an image out of our React application. The first step is then to create a um, production, um, production build of our React application. So we have some static HTML and JavaScript files. And at the end, we will put those files into an Nginx container. Nginx is just a web server. Uh, we will, you can use whatever web server you want to use, but uh, for this purpose, we will use Nginx. And uh, we will serve our static front-end React code through uh, Nginx web server at the end, which is also containerized. So that's the agenda for today. You can just lean back and enjoy, or you can follow along, but make sure that you have a cup of coffee ready or a cup of tea, depends a little bit on the hour you're watching this video. And I would say, let's roll the intro. Welcome back guys. So first of all, if you want to follow along, there are two prerequisites you need to fulfill. The first one is we are working with Docker here. So you need to have uh, Docker as a container runtime running on your host. To do, uh, if you want to do this, just Google Docker install. You will end up, in, for example, like this page here, and then you can install Docker for your operating system you're working with. The same goes to Node.js. So you need to have Node.js installed. Just Google Node.js download and you will end up at this page. Pick the late, latest uh, version or the, the LTS version, which state, stands for a long-term long -term service uh, version. Pick the OS you're running and uh, you're good to go. So next thing we will do is we will just fire up a command line and I have my project directories Cloudversity here, and we will create a React app because we need that to Dockerize it, right? So we will execute the following command, which is just npx create React app, and then you need to give it a special name. And my special name is awesome app, yeah. And then just hit enter. This will maybe take a while, uh, maybe one, two minutes. So it will just create a really basic React app, some kind of boilerplate if you want to call it like this. And I will pause the video right here and we will see each other in a few seconds. Welcome back folks. So uh, it says happy hacking, let's do so. So the React app is has been created successfully. So we will just jump into the directory it just created and I will open the directory with my uh, code edit editor, which is uh, Visual Studio Code. So I can just type in code dot and it will open the current directory in uh, Visual Studio Code. So as you can see, it created the project structure. It created all the, or downloaded all the modules which are needed to run the application. And this is just a basic structure for React projects. The cool thing is we can just execute now npm start and it will actually run our application. So here we go. It spawns a new tab on localhost 3000. And as you can see, it says this uh, is a development build. So it's not optimized yet. And we can actually just change, for example, this one here, this, this title or this span. We go to, I think it's app.js. Yeah, exactly. We can go in here and just uh, make it look like our own app. So we will write in there something like my awesome React app, right? Doesn't make sense. So we can save it. If we save it, it's hot reloading. So as you can see, uh, it changed the text here directly. So that's all fine, but that's not the topic of today. The topic of today is how to containerize our applications. We will just shut down the server here with control and C, and we will go back into Visual Studio Code. What we need to do 
is we need to create a Docker file. Docker file. And the first line in a Docker file is always a from command and you need to specify an image, um, which it inherits or which it downloads and then you can put stuff into the image. So there are a lot of images um, available at the Docker Hub and we will use one of the images which is called Node and there are different flavors of the Node image and you can install um, LTS Alpine 1. So that's a pretty small one and uh, it, it just has Node installed. So we don't need to install Node in this kind of image by our own. It's just already there and it's working. So that's great. We have uh, our base image specified. And the next thing we want to do is we want to copy the package JSON uh, to dot. So what is dot and where is dot? So dot is the directory within the container, within the image we are creating here. And so we specify a working directory and call it slash app. And every time we will execute or exec into the container, uh, we will end up at this specific path at slash app. And we are copying the package JSON, which is this file here into the directory. Because in package JSON, all the dependencies which are necessary for our application are specified, we can now run npm install. So this will download all the node modules which are needed to run our application. The next thing is to copy our code into uh, the container or into the image. So we copy everything from dot to dot. And the last thing we need to do is we have a command um, which, is, which will be executed if we run the container. And the command will be it's an array of strings, uh, array of strings, yeah. And then we will execute npm start it's the same command we executed over here in our terminal a few seconds ago. And you could maybe ask, why do you copy two times? Why do you copy package JSON and then copy everything? Why not just line seven and remove line four? This is because Docker is uh, working with layers. Each command will create a layer in our image. And if the layer didn't change since the last build, it will use caching. And um, the, the step which will take the most amount of time if you build this image will be run npm install. But if you do not change copy package JSON, run npm install does not need to be run as well. So you're just copying your new code into your image and you're starting it. So the first time you build the image, it will take a while, but afterwards it will be really, really fast. This is why you do not want to have this in one command. Yeah? Otherwise, if you do it like this, for example, yeah, you will, oops, you will invalidate your cache every time you make a code change. And it doesn't make sense because then your build time is longer and your develop slower and it's not good practice. So go with this one here. And we could build it already, but because we want to do it correctly, we will create another file. And this one is called Docker Ignore. You're, I guess you're pretty familiar with ignore files. For example, your git ignore file and Docker Ignore is doing exactly the same. It's ignoring what you are writing in here at build time. And we don't want to copy our node modules local folder into our image because our image will automatically install all necessary node modules when we run it. So um, it's better to do so, so you don't have any dependency problems after it or while building it. You should just ignore node modules uh, because you're already doing this in the container. You're installing them in the container as well. So that's it. And now we can go ahead and say docker build minus T and then we call our app awesome app, right? It's the app of the name, so we're just tagging it. And then you need to specify the path where you want to put it, uh, where, where, not where you want to put it, where uh, the Docker file is located. And the Docker file is located in the root directory. So 
can hit enter. And this will take, I'm not sure, maybe a minute, maybe some seconds. So I will just wait and uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, it's just some warning messages that some modules are out of date or something like this. So everyone who worked with NPM uh, knows those messages, I guess. Okay, so here we go again. And I will scroll some lines up here. Perfect. You can see it took 44 seconds to install node modules. Um, and the rest of it was just a matter of few seconds. But let me show you something special. If you change one file, for example, something in your code, and we change my awesome React app, and you change it to our awesome React app. So you changed some code, but not the dependencies. If we run the command again, that's it. It's done. Boom. Few seconds, I mean two seconds maybe, because it used caching. It used caching here, used caching here, and it just copied new stuff. And to copying a one kilobyte file is, uh, does not take that much time. So, as you can see, that's good practice to specify two copy commands here. So, now we have our image. We can look at it, Docker images. It pulled the LTIS Alpine image, of course. I did this already three weeks ago, so it's already here, but our app has been created 27 seconds ago and we can run our app. So we can say docker run, we need to specify a port. So I will go for 8080 and I need to point it to 3000 inside the container. And then we need to specify the container we want to run. So it's awesome app and that should be it. Yep. And starting development server and it's running. We can check this. We can go to our browser. On localhost 3000, there's nothing running anymore. If I refresh the page, there's nothing will happen. But on port 8080, we should see our app. And now we serve the app in our Docker container. So that's great. We dockerized our React app and we have a production server in the Docker container running but we wanted to serve it uh, in a real world example, so in a real web server. So let's go ahead to the next step. The first thing I will do is I will close this one here and just control C here on the, not, so that we are not in the container anymore. And the next thing we will do, we will create a new Docker file. And the next one will have a name, something like Docker file production and I will just copy paste the code from docker file to docker file production but we need to change a few things here we need to change a few things um, what we need to change is this one here at the beginning is a builder we will call it builder and I will go into, into details um, I'm sorry we call it builder and uh, I will go into details in a few seconds. So we don't need this and yeah, perfect. Now we can say from nginx alpine copy and from oops builder no from builder so what we are doing here is we use actually a multi-staged docker file which is great we will see in a second so we do execute the full the, the same steps as before we install the package json and we run the npm install we copy our code but we need a second command which is npm build it's also stated here if you want to have an optimized production build you need to run npm run build not npm build and if we do this it will create static content static javascript and html files in a directory which is slash build and we want to serve these files in our web server so we can run this this will create the slash 
build file with all the necessary files and we will put them into and uh, we will co we will copy them from app slash build into our nginx um, image and if you want to serve static files and you're using the nginx alpine image then in the documentation page you can see that is under you, you should put it into user share nginx slash html and that's actually it so it's just a little bit extended file um, but it will be much smaller which is good because you share those images um, a lot and it makes a difference if it's 300 megabytes or just 10 and I will show you this in a second. So first of all, we will run a Docker build again. This time we will tag our image with the nginx. So awesome, awesome app colon nginx. And our Docker file is now Docker file slash production. Oops, no, it's underscore production. And hit enter. And it didn't work because Um, boop. just forgot the dot at the end and as you can see it used caching again because it already has the it already ran through this once and it just needed to download the nginx alpine image which has been done here and then yeah that's pretty much it it just copied the step we said or we defined it copied our static content into our new image and now if we go to docker images you will see that we had an awesome app image so the development server with the node image this one was 350 megabytes big and our nginx container now is just 23 megabytes so it's really really small and we can serve this container as well just hit enter or just execute docker run we will use another port for this one so port 8081 um, pointing to free no pointing to 80 because nginx will serve the static content on port 80 and then we will need to say awesome app and don't forget the uh, tag at the end and hit enter so this is ready for startup okay cool so we have still our local host 8080 this is the container from before. And now we have localhost 8081. And this, as you can see, is now from the Nginx. So this is serving from a real web server. And the difference now is, first, the first difference was the image size, and it was a huge difference. So it's one tenth, I guess, of the original image size. But if we fire up the console, in our Chrome browser, for example, you can use whatever browser you, you like. Um, oops, we need to go to the network tab and I will just refresh the page here. And you can see that if we look at the size of our contents we are uh, loading when we load the page, the biggest content or the biggest file is our zero chunk javascript file and this is one is 409 kilobytes big if we go to our nginx production build we can do exactly the same refresh the page and the biggest file now is 132 so our image is smaller and the loading time of our application so the performance will be much better because now we are serving actually production ready static files in a real web server so that's it. I guess we covered all the points uh, we wanted to cover for this video. It would be really nice if you enjoyed the content to give it a like, to subscribe to the channel because there will be a lot more videos in the upcoming future. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.